Hello, this is Gene Irwin, founder of the 3D Business Launch Model. In this particular module, you're going to learn about the details for everything that goes into Module 1, the 72-hour analysis. The 3D Business Launch Model is based on a progressive platform designed to help you find your ideal business structure, whether your efforts are destined to become a startup, acquisition, or franchise. Our focus is based on a 10-module process designed to dynamically grow your business potential over a brief eight-week period. Each of the design modules we develop is critical to help you succeed because, and this is vital, some of the module details will be tailored to each business separately. One size doesn't fit all. We're now going to show you some of the details that will change over time based on your company and what we believe is the fastest way to grow your specific business. Our business is tailored to fit your business exactly. This is Gene Irwin founder of the 3D Business Launch Model, we look forward to working for you. In order to understand what goes into the 72-hour analysis, it is basically our complete understanding of your business. If you recall, you were given the opportunity to fill out something called the Confidential Data Research Analysis. In it, we need to understand the owners and all of your executives' brief experience, background, and business experiences. We need to understand your primary business and we define that through your products, your services, and your proposed market, especially if you're fairly new, or your primary business if you've been in business for a couple of years. And finally, what other questions do you have that we can address at this time? Once we understand some of the areas that we can help you with personal goals, we want to look at your organizational goals program and how that helps and affects your entire company. Then we want to take a look at something called an executive conference. What is that? That's when we take all of our staff members and executives from around the country and look at the details of your 72-hour analysis so we can better help and create a program just for you and your business. We look at your management techniques. We look at your employees and see what we can do to help you there in all aspects of your business because those are the people you have to rely upon in order to carry out your instructions in order to make your business successful. We then look at your product sales analysis in detail. We've shown some experience, uh, some slides of that in the past. We want to help you understand exactly what it takes to create a product and then how to market that most effectively and properly to your clients. We already gave you a program called the Slide Edge Techniques. We'll go into that in more detail when it's time to have that module uh, explained to you from our experts, but you'll understand the benefits of that program. And what is your unique selling proposition? We need to help you understand what that is so that it competes with everything that you do and competes with the marketing prospects of your clientele. Next, we want to understand your technology, how you use it, and also how you take advantage of the website that you probably have. And move on to one of my favorite areas, which is known as executive development. As I've said before, not one person and understand every aspect of his business and be an expert in it. We want to help you there as well. And finally, let's take a look at your business and how well we did in supporting your operations over the next eight weeks and how we help you with something called the executive ROI or return on your investment. We're pretty good at that and we're going to show you how to do all this process in detail as we begin to unravel something called the 72-hour analysis. To give you an idea of what to expect after we complete the Module 1 72-hour analysis, we're going to then take a quick look at your most urgent client challenges. We're going to look at your market. We're going to look at your industry. We'll take a close look at your company again, the strategies that you use, the products that you're trying to sell, market, or create, how you service those products to your clients, what are the technical issues that you face, what are the sales issues, and how do we defeat your competition. Part of what we do is establish a foundation with you, your personal history, your education, your career, and finally, why do you want to create a business now in this market? We'll help you understand all of these things as we begin our relationship with you in something called the 3D Business Launch Model. We're looking forward to it. And this is Gene Irwin, the creator of the 3D Business Launch Model. We look forward to working for you in detail. Shown briefly again is the overview of the 3D Business Launch Model and the 10 different modules we'll be working on to help you accelerate your business. Keep in mind, most of these will change as we begin working with you in detail. We're going to start explaining to you all of Module 1 right now. The 72-hour analysis from 3D Business Launch Model, Part 1. It goes into great detail. 
please pay attention and take notes or stop this video from time to time. This module is critical information to help you succeed in the business of your choice, whether that is a startup, acquisition, or franchise. The 3D Business Launch Model details will focus this particular video on the 72-hour analysis and why it is so important to our relationship. The questions we present and the detailed answers that you provide will set the tone for our immediate understanding of your business challenges. As we look closer at the 3D Business Launch Model 72-hour analysis, where we look at your industry, your market, company, product and services, businesses, strengths and weaknesses, and your top three issues right now. 3D Business Launch Model includes contents for your 72-hour analysis of the following. Once we have your analysis, we're going to look at the forms that you filled out and sent to us, Forms 1 and 2. I want you to take a look at something called an 8-minute presentation video. We'll have that link to you in just a moment. And finally, I want to talk to you about something called your personal consultant. And we're going to cover something called organizational goal setting and personal goal setting. All of that's coming up in just a few moments. I've created an 8-minute presentation. Please take a look at it. It's located at https colon www.youtube.com forward slash watch question mark v equals c uppercase u t uppercase x m 1 q z hyphen go. Please take a look at it. Years ago I created something called your personal consultant guide. In this case to your first $100,000 year. I'm just going to outline the 20 goals that are in there. Number one, define goal. Number two, manage your time. Number three, use the book. Number four, maximize opportunities. Number five, practice excellence. Number six, economic analysis. Number seven, choose a mentor. Number eight, financial growth. Number nine, follow through. Number 10, capital requirements. Number 11, who's your financial team? 12, advisory council. 13, what are your strategic tactics? 14, have an investment planning. 15, Communication expertise, 16, experience needed, 17, education required, 18, multiplying yourself, 19, money management, and finally, how to create your own personal $100,000 a year. Just finished talking about the 8-minute presentation. That's the point of these 8 minutes to success on this particular slide. But I want to talk about self-imposed limitations. Sometimes you're going to have a lot of people tell you, you can't do that. No one's done that before. It'll never work. If you listen to that kind of garbage, you're going to be stuck in a rut, just like 99% of all the people who fail to try. Your goal is to decide what it is you want to accomplish. Let us help you get there. So you want to establish something called personal goals. They have to have four characteristics. I call it MRST. They've got to be measurable. They have to be realistic, specific, and you have to have a time limit on it. And so the goal here is to help you understand that, and then we'll transition that process into organizational goals. We're looking at several software packages now. We're going to recommend two or three of those to you. But in the meantime, understand that that is going to be a separate video dealing with personal and organizational goal setting. Back into the details now of the 3D Business Launch Model and the 72-hour analysis, we're going to look at the owners and executives and try to understand their experience, their education, what are the management strengths, what are management weaknesses, why do you want to have this business? Why this particular product? Why this particular industry? And who is missing? Who do you need on your team that you don't have now? Sometimes business owners don't have the experience necessary to run a business. And believe it or not, the types of energy and the types of force that it takes to start a business isn't necessarily the best one to continue the business. And you see that happen all the time in large companies as they begin to shuffle people around in order to get the very best people in the right job. So the goal here is to help you understand what your education experience, how that leads to management strengths, where the weaknesses are, and how that improves your business, and then how do we backfill with the people who are missing. The next thing we want to do is look at your primary business. We want to take a look at your products, your service, your proposed market, and the barriers to entry, and any limitations that you have in your products, services, or ideas prior to your delivery to the client. The most in facts and features that we take a look at, of course, is your capitalization. We want to look at your business 
We'll provide you with a business analysis of what your business is presently worth, what its future value might be. We want to take a look at what your acquisition plan is, your startup or franchise, and then your transition from your startup company to an operational company. We're going to help you through all of those kinds of things. Next level of information we need on your company is the market knowledge. We need to understand your competition. We need to help you with a competitive analysis so you know how to defeat your competitors as they talk to the same client you're trying to reach. We need to understand the market size that you're trying to penetrate, what your market share will be, what the market limitations are going to be for the future, and of course what the market cost CPL. Now what does that mean? CPL means cost per lead. What does it cost you to find a prospect who might want to buy your services, products, or ideas? It's very important. We know that number early on so you can anticipate what your marketing efforts are going to be. I've talked about this before, but we're going to do something called a SWOT analysis, which you should understand is something called the business strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, and threats. But quite frankly, we need to understand what your business barriers are going to be in order for you to enter the market you're trying to reach at the profit level you're trying to sustain for your company. We're going to walk through each of those areas with you uh, and make sure that our experts help you through that process. Very important that you understand your strengths, weaknesses, where the opportunities are and where the threats are in keeping your business going. We need to receive some general information about your company, your general business including the start date, the ownership, your contact information, whether you're a local, regional, or international company, and your brand recognition at this time and the stage of your business, and your competitors. We need to understand who we're going after in order to reach the kind of market share that you need to keep your business growing and being successful. Let's talk a few moments about something called the minimum viable product. As you begin to build your company, if you don't have products developed already in terms of a franchise, then we need to look at your acquisition approach, what products or services you want to provide the clientele, and if it's a startup, we'll take a look at that in great detail, but we need to understand the key functions of your product, your very first product that you're going to deliver to your clients, and who's going to be the early adopters, which person or companies are going to take advantage of your beta site operation to see if that product will work exactly the way they want it to and what changes need to be made in order to make it successful. We'll look at something called a mind map to help understand how your minimum viable product will work in various markets, its features, and of course who is going to be your first customer. Very important that we map all that information out. Continuing now with your minimum viable product, we want to look at your market segment. Who's going to be the early adopters, the first clients that you're going to have? Because you're going to spend a lot of time with them. You're going to give them extra service that you didn't anticipate. We call this a beta test. We want to make sure that we fail early so that we find out where the problems are and get them to be fully functional so that they're touting your uh, merits of the product and of course the service that you provide them on an immediate basis. And let's make sure that we define release dates for progress updates on that particular product and then eventually you're going to have something called product success. We're going to protect that. In the next few slides we're going to talk about something called part two of the 3D business launch model and the 72 hour analysis. It gets fairly intense but we're going to go through it here in just a couple of minutes. This is the next section of the module one, 72 hour analysis, part two. We're going to go into some other areas that you may not have thought of to make sure that we have a good handle on what your products and services are for your clientele. Sometimes, believe it or not, when we get involved in business, we think we're in one business when we find out we're in a completely different industry altogether. So the question is, what business are you in? Are you in a delivery business? Are you in a manufacturing business? Are you in a support role? Are you in a sales role? What is it that you are building that the world needs at this time in the United States, throughout North America, perhaps throughout the world. And if you don't build it, who will? Why would anybody want to buy it? What are the barriers to owning the market? What do you got to do to captivate and capture the market, at least initially? And is it something that's going to be sustainable? So you need to understand these questions and answers and then determine from there how big is the customer base and, this is, and the question then becomes, is this something you decided that the products and services you're providing are in fact what you want to accomplish over the next several years? Then you need to understand where the problems are going to come from. In other words, you need to determine the bottlenecks. What is it that's going to keep you from success? 
And in those bottlenecks, as you research, whether it's funding, whether it's delivery, whether it's sourcing uh, the products, the raw materials that you need to make this work, or the people that you need to hire, you need to assign key people, key personnel to make sure that the bottlenecks don't happen and you're going to uh, prevent those from occurring to stop your business cold. You'll establish something called a minimum path. It's called a, a minimum path to success. We'll explain it to you in a, in a little while. And you want to plan for using three different types of paths or solutions to get you something called minimum spanning tree. I'll explain that when I talk to you on the phone or see you in person. So plan on using three or four different paths to get to your goal. And you want to plan ahead, always. You don't want to react to problems. You want to anticipate them and plan ahead. That's the secret. If you're doing planning properly, you're going to be able to keep your competitors at bay. Competition is a big thing. You want to understand it at all times. You, know, you want to develop something called a certain RFP criteria. What does that mean? RFP stands for Request for Proposal. It means somebody's asking you for a bid for the delivery of your services and products. You want to be able to explain that to your uh, client ahead of time so that you can keep the competitors at bay. You want to develop a certain way of delivering your response to an RFP. You want to learn how to use guerrilla marketing skills and tactics. You can move faster than these larger corporations because you're small at this time. You want to outpace the product. What does that mean? You want to make sure that you plan for the obsolescence of your products and services so that you already have those on the shelf ready to go. But listen very carefully. Do not disclose those products ahead of your current model line because you'll end up uh, having the clients wait for the new stuff while the old stuff disintegrates. You want to plan for the next generations early in the career of your business. These are going to be odd questions, but what are your management strengths from your perspective? What do you think your management strengths are going to be if I asked some of your employees and some of your partners? What would your people say that your management strengths are? What do you think the investors in your company or business would say your strengths are? How about your personal friends? What would they say about you? And finally, odd question, what would your parents say your personal strengths are? If these all match, then you have the management skills necessary to begin, operate, and run a very successful company. If they don't match, we've got some work to do, which is what I expect. How do you plan to market this product or service to your clientele, whether they're across town or across the country? Do you plan on having direct salespeople do it? Are you going to be the salesperson? Are you going to provide lease options? Or rent to buy, rent to own? Uh, what are the delivery schedules? How many days after order or weeks after order are you going to guarantee that the products and services will be on the doorstep of your clients? Because if they're not, they're going to be very, very upset. We need to make sure if you make a commitment to a client that you keep that commitment to your client. Delivery schedules make or break companies faster than you can possibly imagine. The customer service is number one. The client customer is king. You gotta understand if you want repeat business and referral business, you got to take care of your customers. It is critical to your business. I can't overstate that. Are you going to use OEMs, meaning other people selling your products and services? Are you going to use vendors? All of these things need to determine ahead of time in something called your distribution plan. Ah, one of my loves, technology. What is your foundational development for your product and services? What are the barriers to entry from other people trying to copy or duplicate what it is that you do? How can you stay ahead? You can stay ahead in the market, especially in the technology market, by pivoting quickly. Six months is too long. You need to think about planning out new point releases of upgrades and products that's maybe five months out. Bring customers along for the upgrades. You need to plan early for the product life cycle and make sure that your failures are early in your product development and adoption so that you can correct them quickly and make sure that you reach not only your deadlines but your delivery schedules. Very important that you understand how your technology supports and builds your clientele as well as your reputation. Somebody at your company needs to watch the cash in and out. You must manage your cash flow to make sure it doesn't go beyond 90 days out so that you have the cash to operate your business. Someone has to take care of that full time. That's all they do. They watch the money in and out and it's somebody you've got to trust explicitly whether it's in somebody in internal or whether it's an external bookkeeping or accounting firm, you've got to stay on top of it every day. You need to know where your schedules are, you need to know where your money is, and we need to know what your receivables are going to be. 
You might want to consider using net 10 on all early stage purchases if you have the cash flow. That 10% discount on your uh, supplies and sources is very, very important in helping to build your early profitability. Stay on top of ARO deliveries after receipt of order. In other words, you place an order, you need to stay on top of it to make sure they deliver to you on time so you can deliver your clients on time. Let your early adopters beta sites sell your story and you need to take sure and make sure that you have full-time acquisition of cash and credit at all times. I mentioned a little bit earlier about something called the minimum viable product concept. I want to explain a little bit more about that. Some of your investors require you to build something called a proof of concept. That's what POC means. And the goal here is to get your first immediate possible product prototype so you can see if this thing is going to work. If it does, then you want to add features and make it a viable product so you make it a minimum viable product concept as quickly as possible. All right, so make sure that you go through that quickly and add features to make sure it's a viable product. Do not expose the second level products to your market. Do not tell them, wait until this new product comes out. You're going to love these features. Don't ever do that. It'll cavitate your current sales line and product line and they will wait until you hang out and finally get that product to them. Keep all development schedules secret. Very, very important. In order for you to have executive growth, you need to be, have somebody around you that you don't have experience in. We call those folks mentors. Keep your mentors active. If I'm a mentor of yours, along with my staff, you keep us involved in your business as it grows in the front end. Decide early, modify slowly. You want to become a force multiplier, and you can do that through our business and our company and executives and our consultants. They stay on top of your products and services. We want to make sure that we help you succeed. And always be improving people around you. Help them grow as you grow. Give them credit where credit is due. Take the responsibility and take the blame and errors, but share the credit and the success and make sure your people are appreciated. They will stay with you for years and years and years. The goal here is to make your business sustainable, profitable, and successful. This is Gene Irwin, the founder of the 3D Business Launch Model. And then we're going through something called Module 1 of the 72-hour analysis. If you have any questions for us, give us a call at 1-800-750-8767. Or you can contact me directly through an email at ghigfac at aol.com. My parent company is Global Funding and Acquisitions Corp. We're located in the Phoenix, Arizona area. We expect great success in working with you. Have a good evening.